You see, you can make a mockery of Jesus Christ. And that is really the, the main and the only reason, the only true reason why there is so many attempts at making mockery of Jesus Christ. Making mockery of his crucifixion, of his miracles, of his birth, of his conception, of his Last Supper with his disciples. One of the very important I was trying to find a fancier word, but I'm an immigrant. English is not my first language. Pivoting moments. There. A fancy word, for me at least. Pivoting moments. In the relationship of God and his followers. Jesus and his disciples. His disciples back in the days of Jesus Christ when he was with us in the flesh. And today, of Jesus Christ being with us in spirit, signifying the covenant between us and our Lord and Savior. It is interesting that it is becoming the attack from the same group of people that perverted the sign of the covenant that is between us and our Lord and Savior, that is the covenant between us and God, the rainbow. When Noah was still on the ark, coming out of the ark, stepping out on this renewed, renewed, the, the earth baptized by water, seeing the rainbow in the sky, the sign of the covenant, that such a thing will no longer happen. And the same thing when we go through the trials and tribulations. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it can get dark and gloomy. And it does, a lot of times. Whether we are... We have not been saved, we have not grew in our faith, we have not found our faith again. Because really, all of us, in our adult years, people who have no faith as adults, it's not like they don't have faith or they never had faith. There is no such thing as someone who never had faith. There is only someone who have lost faith. Because we all had faith as children. And that is why when you look at children, you don't see them being running around being afraid. Oh, mommy, I don't want to do that. This is too scary. No, you go and you do it. You can climb out wherever. You can do whatever. <laughs> kids, as kids. We were not scared. It's as we grow older, we acquire these fears. And when we acquire these fears, we slowly compromise on our faith. The more we are afraid, the less, the less faithful that we are. And that brings me to uh, a very important point that I wanted to make in this video, is that I came to another milestone that I had a feeling that I will be coming to, and here we are. And uh, I started selling all my guns and all my gear. <laughs> Shocking, right? <laughs> Coming from someone who had a Firearms of America 
gun channel coming from someone who was actively involved in politics as a Second Amendment frontman, speaking at conferences, speaking in churches about guns. You should buy guns. Step one, buy a gun. <laughs> that was part of my presentation. Step one, buy a gun. Coming from the country, seeing people being broken down, submitted by the authority. The, the, the people that are disarmed, that were disarmed first, having no chance to stand up because really that's that's the whole that's the whole idea and importance of the second amendment of owning the firearms in the first place is not self defense second amendment is not about self defense unless we're talking about self defense from the government tyranny in that case yes but the second amendment is about government tyranny it's not about self-defense from the robbers breaking into your house it's not about self-defense from being mugged on the street it's not about sports or being able to go and hunt it's not about none of those things the second amendment is about being able to stand up to the government tyranny the regular people civilian we the people doesn't really matter whether you're civilian, military, law enforcement, as long as you put yourself as we the people, the common folk, or the city, or farm, or whoever, it doesn't really matter, but who is not a government official, feeling oppressed by the government, feeling like their rights are taken away, their freedom of whatever they want to do, and that's where the problems start to come into play whenever it comes to politics if you take out the faith out of it because everybody defines freedom differently the whole liberal movement is about freedom think about the word liberalism liberty it sounds great just like democracy it sounds great the, I mean the, the, think about the root of the word democracy it's two words demo kratos power of the people why not what's wrong with that it sounds great, right? Power of the people, yeah. That's what Second Amendment is about. It's about power of the people. People having power to stand up to the government tyranny and say, no, we are not going to allow you to, to do any of this. But the whole point is that no matter how you spin it politically, no matter from which perspective you're looking at it, if you're taking the faith out of the equation and it's been taken out out of the equation for a while now the whole thing falls apart your second amendment doesn't matter your freedom of speech doesn't matter your freedoms in general don't matter freedom of religion absolutely makes no sense none of this makes sense standing up to government tyranny <laughs> for what okay so you stand up to government tyranny. You overthrow the government. Massive bloodshed. You overthrow the government. Okay. Now what? We have plenty of examples around the world. Countries that had these revolutions, violent revolutions, that did successfully overthrow the government and new leaders came into place ended up being worse dictators than the previous government why? because there was no faith that was put into the equation and if you don't understand faith if you don't have faith if faith is not the main the center of everything of everything that if, if it's not built on faith then it doesn't matter then it is meant to fail it will fail and of course we live in a society we are at the point in 
our time where we can openly mock someone who, the only one, not someone, the only one who can, who does explain what faith is, what faith is. I want to say it's all about, but yeah, what faith is. What is faith? Faith is your relationship with God. How can you have a relationship with God if you don't understand God? Who is God? Can you tell me? Who is God? What is God? Where is God? You see, we, with our human mind, we're not going to be able to answer that question. And so, as part of God's plan, that is why we are even look the way we look, because it was part of God's plan in the first place. And as God is, is, was and will be, was, is and will be, always present, all of this was always part of the plan. So it was from the very beginning of everything, at some point, it was meant for God to come in in the flesh. And that is why there is the image that is what we look like when we look in the mirror. And that is why we are created in God's image. Because God himself, at some point of history, 33 years, became flesh. But why? Why did he become flesh? Because for us, flesh, there was no other way to understand. No matter what we done, no matter how hard we tried, no matter what we wrote it down, fail. We follow somebody, fail. Just everything was a failure up until he came and showed us by his own example, with his teachings that are like nothing that have ever been, that are like nothing that there is today with the advancement of science and all the philosophers that existed throughout history and all the historians and all the archaeologists and all the psychologists and all of the studying and studying and books and professors and this and this and that, scholars. There is nothing remotely that can come close to the teachings, to parables of Jesus Christ. The parables that were presented with birds, with trees, with seeds, with fish, with water, with sun, with wind. The things that a child can understand. Do you see the irony with all of this? As a child, it is easier. With a childlike faith, you don't have to be a scholar. You don't have to be a theologian. All you have to be is let go of your pride and become that childlike faith like you were as a child. Childlike, you become like a childlike faith. I know it's immigrant. I have an excuse. So, with all of that being said, I know it was part of my journey to, to go through all of this, to shoot hundreds of thousands of guns, to shoot with the best shooters that are out there to shoot the fanciest, most expensive guns, to go through extensive training, to be an armed security and look after some VIPs, some very high profile people. And then to go through this journey of being involved in politics and 
traveling around the country and meeting all the people, getting to know the Second Amendment community, conservative community, understanding all of this and coming to this place, getting out of all of this and coming out into the woods, spending the past almost a year now running drills pretty much every day. I mean, I don't even know what I have not done. It's easier to try to think what I have not done. I probably haven't done any shooting. I haven't done any shooting underwater. Above water, I've done really any kind of shooting that I could come up with. I've shot from the car, under the car, over the car, from the house, over the house, from the woods, while running, while crawling, while climbing, Climbing with a night vision, shooting off of skis, camouflaging, having tons and tons of military spec gear. But this is not childlike. This is very much adult-like placing my survival placing my strength on these things that make it more effective for me to neutralize threat but what is a threat? Who am I going to neutralize? God revealed himself to me and he gave me this ability to speak and share the good news, the news of salvation. He gave me the understanding through being saved myself. When I go out into the nature, when I go out hiking and climbing and I don't dress in my gear, in my tactical gear. I don't carry a gun. I carry a knife just if I need to cut the rope, if I get tangled up. But I'm not worried about wild animals. This is not a threat to me. So why would I worry about anything else? If someone really has that much of a problem and they want to come after me, do I really want to be that much of an unkillable? For what? To prolong my existence here in this world of the flesh? that openly mocks my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I'm not holding on to anything here. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have friends, I have family, I have my children. But I know that there is a better life that is waiting. The eternal life. I know it. That's the thing. There is no Maybe, hopefully, I know for a fact, it's only a matter of time. Because I know who God is. And my children do know who our God is. And again, that was a blessing. A blessing that we received from Him. Through His sacrifice. Through what He has done. Giving us that understanding. And of course, my brothers and sisters who are watching. What are we afraid of? I mean, at the end of the day, I can be prepared to the teeth. And honestly, I'm pretty prepared right now. <laughs> but I can have all sorts of things. I can have, I mean, listen, 
It never stops. It never ends. There's always something else that you can get in order to become that more prepared. I don't have a scuba suit. That would be a great thing to have, right? I don't have an underground bunker. That would be a nice thing to have, right? I don't have like an all-wheel drive ATV, one of them buggies, military spec. <laughs> that would be nice to have with a 50 cal mounted on top of it. That's nice to have, why not? You're being prepared. <laughs> You're that much more unkillable now. <laughs> but listen. If something bad happens, you really don't know. Because that might be the center location where the nuke from Russia might land, or from North Korea, or from China. This country made a lot of enemies throughout the past years. And all of that gear, all of that preparedness is out the window. But by saying and by being follower of Jesus Christ, by saying that I'm the follower of Jesus Christ, and by being the follower of Jesus Christ, I can't be running around with guns anymore and neutralizing the made up threat because I'm not gonna be neutralizing anybody. <laughs> except neutralizing people's fears and restoring their faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless everyone. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.